The International Space Station has been a symbol of hope, unity, and technological advancement for many years. Its gleaming structure can be seen from bustling cities as it passes overhead, a testament to human ingenuity and perseverance. However, the end of its life is drawing near, and the United States needs a new station to sustain its operations in space. Rather than bearing the cost of a single massive successor station, NASA has adopted a strategy of promoting a small number of privately owned and operated platforms. The agency has already allocated $550 million for the development of four different models, with Houston-based Axiom Space winning a competition in 2020 to attach a module to the ISS. Axiom Space's module will be gradually expanded until it finally detaches into independent orbit when the station is decommissioned. The company aims to host a variety of activities from research to tourism and astronaut training. In recent months, Axiom Space has taken a significant step toward making this vision a reality. To learn more about Axiom Space's exciting developments in the future of space exploration, tune in to today's episode of Great SpaceX. The International Space Station, or ISS, was constructed over a period of two decades with a total cost exceeding $150 billion, funded by a dozen governments. The first module was launched in 1998, and since then the ISS has been a symbol of human achievement in space exploration. However, after more than two decades of service, the ISS is now showing signs of aging, and its future is uncertain. Its first component, the Russian-built Zarya Power and Propulsion Module, was launched in 1998. The other core pieces of the station were all sent spaceward by 2001. The backbone of the International Space Station, therefore, has spent two decades in space, a harsh environment of wild temperature swings, micrometeoroid impacts, torsional strains, and more. In recent years, signs of aging have become more apparent particularly with cracks spreading across the Zvezda module, and more than the hardware is coming apart. The political forces that drove the formation of the space station partnership, principally the desire of the United States and Russia to work together after the Soviet breakup, have given way to a zealous anti-Americanism in Moscow and suspicions in Washington, D.C. The partnership remains intact for now thanks to healthy working relationships among astronauts, cosmonauts, and engineers, but politically, the rhetoric is at times toxic. Although nothing has been formalized, a general consensus has emerged among the international partners that the International Space Station can probably keep flying through 2028 or 2030. But after that, NASA realizes it needs a succession plan. The U.S. government is not going to build another space station, it's going to fall to the private sector. And Axiom Space is one of the many players that are aiming to commercialize low Earth orbit by launching their own space stations. In 2024, the company has planned to launch the first module of its space station, making it the world's first commercial habitat in the LEO. So far, the company is making significant progress on its all-private space station. Images shared by former NASA astronaut Michael Lopez Alegria, who was part of the start of his first all-private astronaut mission to the ISS last April, show massive segments of the Axiom station being fabricated at Talus in Italy. The images show huge metal rings and cylindrical segments that appear to be part of a docking port. According to Axiom Space's website, the construction of the world's first commercial space station is underway, and engineers at the factory in Italy have already begun welding and machining activities for the primary structures of Axiom Station's first module. Talas Alenia Space will provide two pressurized modules for the space station, which is expected to meet its completion in 2028. According to Axiom Space, the first pieces of fabricated flight hardware are beginning to come together and the assembled module will be shipped to Houston in early 2023. Following the shipment, the final assembly and integration process will start for a late 2024 launch. Around July of 2021, the project was undergoing a detailed design phase. At the time, the four radial bulkheads for the first module had been recently developed in Thales Alenia Space Facilities in Turin. These bulkheads provide the structure to which radial common berth mechanisms, or CBMs, and hatches will attach. Together, the four bulkheads with their accompanying hardware form a cylindrical section, providing four ports for other station elements, including docking adapters. The cylindrical protrusions seen on the bottom half of the bulkhead will serve as a connecting unit, allowing power, data, and fluids to pass from one element to another. 
including Axiom modules and the ISS. When looking at other commercial space stations in the works, such as Orbital Reef, Axiom has a few advantages that make them the upper hand in the future. The other space station companies will have to develop free-flying space stations complete with all the power and other consumables they need to function from the outset. Axiom, by contrast, will benefit from having some basic services, like power, from the International Space Station at the beginning. Not only are they constructing a state-of-the-art space station, but they also sent a multinational four-person crew to the ISS in the first-ever fully commercial human spaceflight mission by them. Axiom contracted with SpaceX to transport its crew to the ISS and provided training, mission planning, hardware development, safety certifications, medical support, crew provisions, on-orbit operations, and overall mission management. In the crew's 17-day stay, which got extended from a planned 10 days because of storms at the splashdown site, members conducted more than 25 scientific experiments and technology demos. A second Axiom crew is scheduled for liftoff this spring, and future space flights will include crew from countries including Italy, Turkey, and Saudi Arabia, which have contracted with the company to help jumpstart their manned space programs. These flights are an opportunity for us to work together with NASA, so that when our modules show up and we're housing larger numbers of crew, we know who does what and how to keep everybody safe, says Mike Sufredini, president and CEO of Axiom Space. A 30-year NASA veteran, he served as ISS program manager from 2005 to 2015. At Axiom, he's pairing his experience with an ambitious vision for how the company's eventual station could impact the space economy. In the space business, there's a big focus on the transportation, the rockets, Sufredini says. But if you think about the railroads that were built across the US, they were built to serve a destination. Without a reason to go somewhere, they wouldn't exist. We're building the destination in space, the real estate to allow multiple businesses to operate in low Earth orbit and take advantage of the microgravity environment. Axiom aims to attach its first ISS module with life support and crew quarters for four people in late 2025. A second module to be delivered later will add capacity for four more. Each module will have its own spacecraft docking station, increasing the ISS's overall docking capacity. Construction of the shell for module number one is nearing completion, with the installation of systems expected to start later this year in Houston, according to Superdini. In another big win this year, Axiom, which employs about 780 people, secured a $228 million order to design the next-generation spacesuit for NASA's Artemis missions to the moon, which will also be used by commercial customers in low Earth orbit. It's our foray into exploration, says Sufredini, but it's also a great transition between NASA and our future space station. We'll have a suit we both understand. We can share airlocks, the whole bit. The goal is a seamless transition when the ISS retires, and by the second half of the century, Sufredini envisions a big city in low Earth orbit where we can support all of our customers and they bring their families, he says. It's all about pioneering and settling and making sure the species has another place to go if it needs to. That's all the information we have for you today. If you appreciate the work my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you next time.